morning, bon dia. I tried to have a slow morning today because it's been a really busy, hectic week. A lot of work, a lot of preparing for the, our big rivalry match against Sporting CP. It's gonna be fun. We have one more practice until the game and that should be a scouting kind of personnel sets practice as well as recovery to make sure we're feeling good but if you guys watched my vlog of the first time we played these guys it was a nasty way to lose still left a bad feeling with us and our team and so we're hungry we're we want vengeance we want blood and so this game also has playoff implications so huge game we got one more practice i'm gonna take you guys with me and then we'll get straight into game day and hopefully by the end of this you'll see us getting a w and uh, a little bit of celebrating okay so i wanted to show you guys kind of how a scouting report works in pro basketball so this is basically this document will get sent three to four days before the game and more or less it's going to have the other team's offensive defensive tendencies kind of what they're doing what their strengths and what their weaknesses are and then how we're going to guard it and how we're going to attack it this is more so just other resources and stuff then we get directly into their actual set plays this is what they run this is how we're going to guard it all those options then after that, we have our individual scouting. This is where we go over each player, kind of their strengths, weaknesses, where they like to attack. Maybe they drive right and they always pull up. Maybe they drive left and they always go all the way to hoops, stuff like that, their tendencies. This is very important to know the players, know who you're guarding and know your matchups. And then we have their stats and just looking for things, maybe like free throw percentage and stuff like that. But honestly, the idea of the scout is just to find things that are digestible, not stuff that's like, you don't need to memorize each player. You you just need to know little details that will give you slight advantages in the game as well as you don't need to know their whole playbook but you need to know different actions different calls and what actions they are going to run how we're going to guard it just remember our defensive schemes i like to focus on things like oh this is how they guard pick and rolls this is how we're going to attack that this is how we're going to guard certain players in different actions stuff like that but you don't want to memorize the scout you want to get just enough to where it helps you and doesn't actually distract you. I'm gonna lock in on the scout and then I'm gonna get to practice. So I'll catch you guys. It's another beautiful day in Benfica. It's hard not to smile, I'm telling you. Portugal is amazing when it's this weather. Oh, 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 baby. I need some words. How are we feeling? How are we feeling? Barbos? Really shy guy, so. Hey, Beto. How are we feeling about the game tomorrow? Let's go. Hey, Zay Silva, how are we feeling about the game? Look, <laughs> it's too cool. First try. for the boy let's hope this whole stadium's filled with red everybody holding their scarves up pre-game hopefully i think it should be a packed house i'll see you guys there how are you feeling about the game tomorrow feel good yeah it's, it's, it's a lot of games they focus like Phil said yeah i like that all right see you tomorrow baby all right Last practice before the big game is done. We went over just about every single play they have for every single counter, literally everything. Probably our most in-depth scouting practice we've ever done. It's like honestly way longer than normal. I think it was like two and a half hours. But we got their sets down stat. The guys were focused. I like our game plan. Again, we are prepared. That's just a matter of going and getting the job done. So my wife's on her way to pick me up and then we're gonna take the dogs to Monsanto. Some nice relaxation, get the blood flow a little bit, chill and then get to bed early. So I'll catch up with you guys soon. Late, late, <laughs> Look who it is, Wienermobile. <laughs> hey. Damn, you look beautiful, Penelope. Oh, baby. Dude, we get it, you're excited. 
Chill out, chill out. You gotta chill out, man. We're, we're almost here. Look, we're here, we're here, we're here, we're here, we're here. We're here. Fast enough. We're here. Chill, chill, chill. We're here, we're here, we're here. Good boy. <laughs> Enough, you met a friend. I think Monsanto might be the greatest park that I've ever lived next to since being playing overseas. If you're visiting Lisbon, I highly recommend it. Yeah, it's kind of where I go to relax and chill, and so it's perfect the night before the sporting derby game. So I'm just gonna chill here the rest of the night, and then I'll catch up with you guys tomorrow. Game day morning, baby. Let's get it. Are we gonna get this win today? Give me paw. Give me paw. Yeah, boy, we gonna get this win. <laughs> Benji, little do you know, there's a puma right here. Get out of there. Come on. Lunatic. All right, the day has come, the big derby day. What I remember most from last time is just how emotional the game was and how I wasn't ready for it, how I got too antsy, too animated, too into it. I had a couple offensive fouls, a couple bad plays because I was too emotional. So today it's all about cultivating peace this morning and understanding and relaxation so that I know today I'm gonna be in control of my emotions. So I don't have some big pregame routine, but everything I'm doing today is trying to relax me for this big moment so that my best is ready when my best is needed. Got a little bit of pregame routine to do, I'm just gonna do a little bit of journaling, just all stuff that's gonna chill me out. I'll take you guys with me for that stuff, and then more or less, it's game time. So here's the pregame journal I've been using for almost the whole year. It is all filled up. My wife got me a new journal, a little soft, a little, little fruity, but we're gonna start a new journal, a new page, a new chapter today. Let's go. Game day journal. I'll show you guys what I do real quick. Game day versus sporting. Big intention. This is my main focus of the game. This is like, if I do this, then I think I'll be successful. I think playing with peace and patience is gonna be the most important thing today because of how emotional the game's gonna be. This rivalry is just so heated and emotional. And I remember last game, I got a little out of my game, got a couple offensive fouls because I didn't process my emotions and just be present, be peaceful. And I've also rushed a couple of plays and didn't make good decisions because I wasn't patient. I was so amped up and so in the moment and so just too much, too much. So take a step back today, play with peace and patience. Then after my intention, I do three game keys. So one simple, it's three things I can do that will help me be successful. I did attack their pressure, sporting, they're gonna trap, they're gonna be physical. The key to handling pressure is to actually go at it because it exposes their weaknesses. And the second key is to know the scout, who are their guys. They have two main guys, Marcus Levette and Eddie Ekior. They run a very good two-man game, and in order for us to win, in order for me to be successful, I need to know these guys, what they do, and how to defend it. And number three, I wrote, be relentlessly yourself. Because for me, I know I'm good enough. It's just a matter of every single time being the best version of myself. It comes with aggressiveness, relentlessness, attitude. I know if I'm myself, I'm gonna do great. So, just gotta make sure I do that though. Then I'll usually do three team keys. More or less, this is what the team needs to do in order to be successful tonight. First thing I said is control the tempo. We, we like to play fast and they like to trap and do all that. We need to play fast, but in control. It needs to be our speed and not theirs. And number two, I said handle their physicality and emotions. This game, I, like I said many a times, can be very emotional, very physical. And third, we just need to be who we are. I think at the end of the day, we are the better team. Emphasis on team. And we just need to be that. And I think it's important that each guy just stars in his role, understands that what he gives to the team, he needs to give it every single night. And that's more or less how we're going to win this game. So I usually do this game day journal just a couple hours before the game just to lock in, focus on what's important for the day and just I've kind of stepped back and just made it a big intention thing just found a lot of purpose and peace in setting my intention early in the day and I feel like my days have I've gotten more out of them when I do that so it's the game day journal
All right, this is it. Derby match, 3 p.m. This is gonna be a big one. I'm not gonna record in there. I wanna be fully focused and ready. I feel at peace. This is gonna be a fun one. And I hope you guys enjoy. So uh, hopefully I'll catch up with you guys after with a win. All right, this whole week of preparation, this whole sporting week comes down to this one moment. 3 p.m., game time, rivalry game day. Let's get to it. For me, when the Benfica fans hold up their scarves and the anthem or whatever plays, it's still one of the most cool moments that I've had overseas, and it just gives me goosebumps every time. In that moment, you can feel that Benfica isn't just some sports club. It's bigger than that. It means a lot to a lot of people, and I'm blessed to be a part of it. Like I said before, this game has huge playoff implications. If we win, we still have a shot at the regular season title. If we lose, that's all but over. In this breakdown, I'm not only going to show some of my plays, but some of my teammates' plays. I have some really high-level teammates, and they do a lot of stuff that I think we all can learn from. Like this play, off the tip, Ivan K. ready to play, drops off a nice pass, TC hammers at home, great statement at the start of the derby match. I don't check in until late in the first quarter, and I really don't make an impact right away because my man AB was absolutely cooking, so everything was running through him. A strong and physical Euro step, imposing his will early, his patented left-right pull-up, and I swear this isn't the same clip, he just got crazy muscle memory on this shot. Here to start the second quarter, I get my first closeout read off a nice extra pass from Zay. Read my man, hand down, man down, just rise and elevate. Two things to notice are my quickness of decision and my force into the ground, sort of that pop off the ground. These two things make for a nice dynamic catch and shoot. Fuck it. This next play down, I do the opposite of what I just did. I get a nice closeout and I just make a slow decision over dribble and then settle for a contested mid-range pull-up. This will get you benched at the EuroLeague level, not good basketball. A couple of plays later, I get the long rebound, and we have a three-on-one break. Tony's in front of me. I probably need to make this pass, but I wait for Ivan, probably the better finisher, to come in late. On a three-on-one fast break, you want to get a clean layup, not necessarily a foul. If I could have this play back, i probably make the quick pass to Tony, and I think my coach agrees. Now I wanted to show this next play just to show the scrappiness of this game. We get the rebound here and TC just pivoting, but boom, hits Ekior with an elbow to the face. This game was physical, intense, and a lot of messy, gritty plays. This one was a good example. I had to show this because you can't tell me my man doesn't look exactly like his chicken from his mouth to his hair. That is crazy. Okay, but back to the game. If you are subscribed to my email newsletter, you'll know that I've been talking a lot about exploring the reject of pick and rolls and how important that is to getting free easy buckets. I do a great job here plus a crafty inside hand finish. I swear he was coming to block this to the 10th row. Let's go back and look into this reject opportunity slash read a little bit more. On this catch I read two things. The big is over anticipating the pick and roll and the weak side help is overly attached to AB leaving the baseline drive wide open. Hunt rejects for easy buckets. People will always ask what two characteristics I think are most important in overseas basketball. One is adaptability and two is versatility. Look how Ivan can guard multiple positions and it just disrupts the whole offense. That's versatility that gets you paid overseas. I get this same pick and roll action where I rejected last time but now my on ball defender is shading me middle. I see the big is hard hedging. On a hard hedge you want to get the ball to the other side of the floor fast because the big will have to retreat. We do this and now AB is able to get downhill and get a two for one action and makes a great decision right here for the drop off. Beautiful basketball, two points, hammered home TC. That's great, great basketball. High level basketball is all about making these mini advantages, two on ones, three on twos, and exploiting them. Right here we did a great job, and this is just, again, absolutely beautiful. Now here on this next play, I'm in great help side position, forcing a skip pass. I funnel baseline, TC steps up beautifully, and walls up. Now I'm off to the races with a head of steam. In previous game breakdowns, I showed poor driving lane angles. This is an example of excellent driving lane angles where I don't allow him to bump me off my line. I initiate contact, I force him to foul, I control the situation. And as always, don't leave money at the line, make your free throws. A few plays later, I'm found in a tough transition situation, a long closeout on an attacker. I get the block call here and I want to learn and get better. So let me know in the comments how I can guard this better to not foul and start to get these calls because I felt like I moved my feet decently but again, I'm not getting the call, so I gotta fix it. Now, I put this play in here because it's absolutely hilarious. TC plays incredible defense and then pulls a JR Smith right here. He launches a half quarter with eight seconds. 
But let me tell you the backstory. I'm blaming Tony Douglas because at practice, this guy will start shouting out the shot clock even when it's not the actual shot clock and guys will be throwing bullshit all the time. Clearly, it's a habit now. We had a solid first half with good team defense and good team basketball and offense. We were sharing the ball well. But again, it's a derby game and you never know how these things go. So we got another 20 minutes, watch how it goes down. To start the second half, I get the ball in the first offensive possession and this behind the back float to a tween, to the right hand fake finish to the left, plus the foul. Yeah, this was one of my toughest moves all season and I think TC agrees with it. Now, if you remember back to my Galatasaray game breakdown vlog, teams were forcing me to finish with my left. I think I've made some progress in that area. And I'll never not say this, don't leave money at the line. One circus shot always deserves another. Watch my man TC here and his excellent footwork with the baseline spin to the Euro step to the middle to the kind of fillet hook. Yeah, big fella was getting jiggy on this one. I love it. Now a couple plays later, I get posted up. I want your guys' advice on how I could guard this better because I get a foul call here and lately the last couple games, I've been getting in some foul trouble and I need to fix it. I need to play physical, but not too physical. So what could I have done differently here? My argument was if I'm getting bumped like that, I need to be able to bump back with the same force, but I guess it doesn't matter because I fouled and I'm going to the bench now with three fouls. TC's advice was be physical on the first bump, but anticipate the second bump and try and go for the charge. My teammate Tony Douglas played in the NBA, not necessarily because he was a bucket, but he was a high, high level defender. Watch this. Lovett is a left-handed dominant player. He forces him to his right, gets a steal. And does this count as a poster? Ivan sure seems to think so, and I think I'm counting it. On his head, question mark? At age 39, that's crazy. Tony Douglas turned back the clock. Big man was also injured on this play, so also praying for a speedy recovery. Now on this play, early in the fourth quarter, I just want you to pay attention to something really small, but a very important detail. The first pass out of the pick and roll, the guy who catches it needs to make a ultra quick decision to attack the rotating defense. I do this here and Beto gets an open three. Now it wouldn't be a derby match without a little shit talk and a little bit of chippiness. I felt on this take foul, there's a little extra shoulder. So I just stared, maybe a second too long, but in reality, all I was telling him right there was I can look wherever the hell I want. I really didn't say a word, so I don't know why he was so upset, but this was my favorite part of the game right here. Number nine came in here chirping for his teammate, telling me to not do it for the YouTube, bro. And for me, that made me happy because that means he's watching my videos and I've got to put it in the YouTube. That's why I'm smiling. This channel is valid. It's got a little bit of real estate in my opponent's heads. Here I get the ball in transition. I do a Euro step, but here's an example of a zero step, the step before the Euro step that makes this not a travel. Not not only was 39 year old Tony Douglas dunking on people, my man AB was catching putback dunks. That's my dog and that's a tough ass putback. Sturby game was all but over, but of course I had to get a little bit of revenge for that hard foul earlier. I called the ISO. Cross over into nothing, don't like what I did here, but I got the ball back. Low shot clock made a play into a pull-up three. That's cash and this derby's over. We've been putting in so much work this whole year and especially this week we turned it up a notch. It felt incredible to get this win and also the way we got this win. We only have a couple more weeks in the season. I hope you guys have enjoyed following along this whole journey. Make sure you like and subscribe and as always, get uncomfortable, live atypical. That's a derby win. That's a rivalry week in the life of a pro hooper. She got eyes and nose She said, yeah, I know Wish I could make it easier I can't, I just know right and wrong